And the second important key factor for sure is the color. I want not to say that the color is not important, but the color is in a different way. So you see, it's not the, the question about hue, chroma and value. What about the translucency? How the translucency could influence the final color? You see these different balls, you have this one, that is totally opaque and this one that is totally translucent. What you see is different color, different shape because of a different background. You can imagine in the mouth when the background is only black, what happened? In the left bowl, this one, you will see the blue one. That is the color because of the opacity. In this one, you will see only a gray color because of the translucency. So what is important is the balance between the opaque and translucent part of your restorations. So uh, what about the fluorescence? It's another important tool. The fluorescence is responsible for the metamerism. That is phenomenal for which every single object can appear in different color under different light sources. So we can't do nothing about the fluorescence because it's a property of the dentin in the mouth, as property of the material that we use to reconstruct the tooth. But today, the main companies, they are producing, are giving us materials that have more or less the same fluorescence of, uh, of the dentin. And what about opalescence? Also the opalescence, we have some opalescent enamel, but we need also some opalescent uh, dentin. You see the opalescence in the natural is a natural effect due to the transmission of the light. If the transmission is direct, you will have a, a, a white blue effect or if the, the light is... Uh, uh, not direct light, you will see a number of red uh, effects. So the opalescence is only an effect, but sometimes we don't need to create also this kind of uh, um, characteristics. Why? Because uh, sometimes to show the translucency of the opalescence in, in the teeth, the, the dentist, the lecturer is showing you under different light sources, really difficult to find in the normal life. That's why Probably we have to concentrate all our efforts in the really important factors relating to the final result. And you see here what the normal dentists, they know about the color, the hue, the chroma and the value. The hue is what we wrongly consider sometimes the color. It means that for sure you, it means yellow, green, red uh, uh, or brown, something like this. But it's not the final color, because the final color is influenced by the quantity of the U that we have. And here is the chroma. You see the uh, example of the glass of water with one drop of uh, blue colorant. With one drop of blue colorant, you will have as a color a light blue, not a blue. But if you follow to put the blue drops inside the water, you will see at the end that the, the glass will become uh, blue. What does it mean? That the U is the blue, even if the color is different, depending on the quantity of the drops that you put inside. So the chroma is really very important. And the last but not the least, in order to the importance is the value. The human eye sensitivity is very high with the value. The value is the brightness. It is indicated in the quantity of the gray that you have inside the restoration. Less you have, higher is the value. More you have, and darker is the value. So in the book of, um, the Stale Italiano book is the, the Layers by Jordi Manato and Hannah Salat, you see how he described the color in a very simple way. Simple way to explain to the people what is the color. You see this is the U. You see that is indicated in dentistry as a letter A, B, C, D, R, sometimes with, with numbers 100, 200, 300, 400, but even in this shade guide where you have a number, you see that there is also the reference about the Vita shade guide because 90% of the dentists all over the world, they are checking still the color with the Vita shade guide. What about the chroma? In dentistry, the chroma is a number. It means A1, A2, A3, or B1, B2, B3. So the quantity of the U that you have inside is indicated by a number. Bigger is the number, higher is the chroma. That's the, the relations. What about the value? Nothing. We don't have any kind of possibility to check the value. Or better, there is a, 
a shade guy that is the Vita Pantra, the Master Shade guy, what did you choose before the value? And the value is very easy to choose. What is very difficult at the end is to check the perfect U because when you have the right value and the right chroma, to choose the U is really very difficult. Why? Because the human eye sensitivity is not so high for the U. So, what about the color matching in dentistry? You see, this is the Vita Shade tabs that we use to check the color with ceramic, but not only with ceramic. A lot of companies, they don't have inside the composite boxes the references, the, the shade guide. So they use, okay, this is impure Vita shade guide. What does it mean, impure? It means it doesn't fit very well. That's, that's believe me, the problem. The color is not an art. The color is only knowledge. It's a number, the color. You know what is an art. Is the color matching? Is the appearance that is an art? It's not the color. You see here, you see an Italian flag, but there is basil, spaghetti, and tomato. So the appearance, how spaghetti, tomato, and basil could appear as a flag, that is an art, but not the color. That is green, white, and red. In a paper or rather Paravina, he showed that it's possible to increase our capability to choose the color by with the timing, knowledge, and training, for sure. He did the paper with the undergraduate and postgraduate students, and they gave them some uh, special light, as the smile line, for example, the smile light. And they see that after the training, they were more strong in uh, choosing the color. So it's possible to improve uh, choosing the color, your capability, but you need to, to train and you need time, and you need to try before. So this is the paper published in Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry in the, two years ago. In the literature, you find that color matching is mostly done by try and, and error. So, but the problem is that we try inside the mouth and the error are in the restoration of our patient. Why not to try before to start with the restoration? That I think is the best moment to try. And uh, why is it so difficult? Because yeah, we are working with these uh, materials that are vitreous and we don't know where is the opacity of the tooth, if it's here or here, or the opacity of our material that we have in our hands, if it's here or here. So only indicating a letter and a number as A2 doesn't mean absolutely nothing if we don't know very well what there is inside the syringe and what there is inside the tooth if the tooth is opaque, if the tooth is translucent. So only after checking this point, you can obtain a good result, knowing very well what kind of material you have in your hands. You see what the, the company they propose. You see here in the hopper, this kind of shade guide that suggests you, if you increase the thickness, you change the color. It's not true. If you increase the thickness, you reduce the translucency. If you reduce the translucencies, you reduce the gray. So that's why it changes the color. Not because of the color is changing, but because the translucency is reducing, increasing the thickness. The other ones say, okay, I, we use a composite. We prefer to give you some shade guide that is in composite. Is correct? It's correct. It's in the same composite. The only problem is that after that, they suggest you to layer. When you layer, you change totally every kind of information that you have. So even if you choose the color, the color is the best, when you put together two materials, you change immediately the color. And the algorithm, it depends on the quantity that you put inside about one or the other masses. These other companies suggest you to choose independently the color of the dentin and the color of enamel. But after that, you have to layer. And again, you change the color. So these other companies say, okay, I have the dentin, I have the enamel, I put together, I put a little bit of glycerin in the middle to avoid the, the hair, and I check the color. This is correct. It's a, a good step forward, but they don't suggest you which is the thickness of the material they have to put, and the algorithm is unbelievable. So it's not so easy. Only to explain a little bit better the concept, look at here. You have different A3 uh, dentin, different brands. You will see with the light that probably it's not so easy to understand which is the real A3 one. 
But you say, okay, I have a different dentin, but now I put the same enamel layer over, 0.5 millimeter. What happened? What happened is that you obtain seven different colors at the end of the story. Even you are using, you have used only A3 dentin and A2, A1, or A3 enamel. So if you change the material, you change the result. So the recipe for a material is not the same as a recipe for another one. That's the problem. If you study a little bit better the material, you see with the uh, fluorescent light, transmitter light, or the, the direct light to study fluorescence, opalescence, and the color, you will see that everything is different. You will see there, in the middle, the layer of tooth, in the other part, dentin and enamel, and you see that they are different in fluorescence, opalescence, at the end, in color. So the problem is that we layer.